everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Jessica Hover and this is Wilson Hover he's five months old today's video is all about sleep training uh, I'm gonna clean up this room and sit down and talk to you in a second but before I start I wanted you to just hang out with me while I put him down for a nap so he's pretty tired um, we can tell because his eyes are red, his eyelids are red, he's been a bit fussy, he's been awake for, how long would you say? An hour and a half, roughly. Um, he, hi, his last nap wasn't very long um, because we were in the car. So we're going to just put him down and see how this goes. First I need to put a shirt on him because he had his hair washed because I messed up his hair. His hair, he was having a bad hair day. And then I put hair product in his hair to try and fix the bad hair day, and it only made the bad hair day worse. Hi. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I'm a professional mom. I'm really good at everything, um, including getting my children dressed. Um, no, I'm a very unprofessional mom. I make these videos because when I had my first baby, Eloise, I had no idea what I was doing. And I just had to learn everything from scratch. This baby's easier because he's my second baby, round two. And so I thought I'd make videos where I showed you what I do. And it's not always the best way, probably. You probably know people who do better. But it's a way that's working and hopefully it'll help make your life easier. And ultimately, I just want you to know that if I can be a mom, you can be a mom. Because I'm not a very mommy mom. Here we go. Oh, this is cute. This is a sleep sack. It's called Zippity Zip and it's from Sleeping Baby. That's the company. So used it for Eloise, used it for my niece, use it for Wilson. It's the perfect thing to transition you out of the swaddle if your baby still likes to be swaddled but is now able to roll over. Um, then it, I guess it's dangerous to have him in a swaddle. So you put him in this thing. So see how he's kind of fussy? It's because he's sleepy. <gasps> you sleepy, huh? You ready? But look how cute he is. He's like a starfish. Say hi, ladies. Hello, hello. Okay, now we're gonna put him in his room. He sleeps in a crib in a room over here. And uh, I think tonight will be the first night that I put his big sister in that room because they're gonna share a bedroom. I've already turned on the sound machine. So if suddenly you feel like you're at the beach because you hear the ocean, I get it. Okay, I know some of you are gonna write me right now to tell me not to put a stuffed animal in his bed. I get it. The Actually, the reason why I put that penguin in there is because he keeps pulling out his passy, but when he has the penguin, he hugs it the way he snuggles me, and I feel good about it. So you don't have to write me, but I understand the risk involved, and I'm not recommending it. I'm just showing you what I do. Okay. Bells, jingle, bells, jingle. Oh, Merry Christmas, deck the halls with sleeping babies. We're so excited to do a video all about how to get your baby to sleep. Sleep training 101, how do you do it? I am still not a professional mom. I'm not a professional sleep trainer. I just believe in sleep training and I'm gonna tell you why. And my hope here is that this tis the season for you to get some more sleep. Yeah, I believe in sleep training. So with Eloise, my four-year-old, I I waited. I waited a long time to sleep train her. I had heard that the longer you wait, the harder it will be. And I still waited and it was harder. It was harder with Eloise in the sense that she was older. So I think I waited until, well, for sure she could say dad, dad. I can't remember if she could say mama. I didn't wait until she was able to like pull herself up on the crib but she could definitely roll all around and be really mad and upset. With Wilson, we just have been sleep training him now and he's five months old, so he can't do a whole lot. And I specifically wasn't teaching him how to say mama. I wanted him to say dada or Becca or Eloise. That way, if he was crying for anyone, it wouldn't be me. Yeah, sleep training. Kids, they need to learn everything. That's what I think. They have to learn how to eat, to walk, to well, to poop, that comes kind of naturally. They just have to learn everything, and so it makes sense to me that they would also have to learn how to self-soothe when they, for many months, were dependent on us to soothe them. And so it's just really not that crazy of a concept for me to think that I would need to let the baby endure some um, kind of challenging crying moments in order to also learn how to sleep. 
with that said, I don't torture my kids. And so it wasn't a, a sleep training thing where I, I just left them alone and didn't come back and oh, it will kind of. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna tell you what we did with Eloise and it was an accident. So Eloise was ready for sleep training. We had mentally prepared. So she had been nursing every few hours consistently, but she didn't need to because she was old enough to nurse a lot during the day and even eat real food and then sleep through the night. But we hadn't done that. We hadn't done any sort of sleep training. So our plan was Sean would go in instead of me because if I went in, she would smell the milk and really want it and it would be so sad. So Sean would do it, okay? So just imagine, I'm gonna paint this picture. I'm in my bed and I can hear Eloise wake up to nurse and she's crying because mom didn't come in. Dad did though, that's what I am telling myself. So I'm in my room, I'm praying for God to take care of my darling, darling crying daughter. Um, Sean had slept on the couch, which is right in front of Eloise's room. And so I knew he heard her, I knew he was going in to check on her and the plan that we had come up with was it every few minutes he would go in, he would check on her, he would just make sure she knew she was okay, she wasn't alone. <laughs> and then he would leave and you know, eventually she would fall asleep. Now, the good news is it did take about an hour of pretty consistent crying on her part, but she did go to sleep and the next night she didn't wake up at all. She slept through the night, which was totally incredible, really amazing, um, really just, and a testament to our parenting. Um, what happened was she cried for an hour. I'm in there. I'm, I'm like almost crying. I'm a new mom. I'm so overwhelmed at the thought of my poor little baby crying and not getting my beautiful breasts. <laughs> and then I come out after she's done crying and I'm like, so Sean, how did it go? How, how did she do? What did you do? How did you get her to fall asleep? And he was like, he was laying on the couch again at that point and he's like what and i was like how did you how did you train her what did you do how did it go i've been praying <laughs> this is real and he goes no no babe she hasn't woken up yet and i was like wait hold on what she's been crying for an hour <laughs> and he hadn't gone in so with eloise we took a really rigid approach where we just ignored our darling daughter for an hour and she fell asleep and she was sleep trained. So that was something. With, uh, with Wilson, we changed our style and we did it a bit differently. With Wilson, he was also nursing every two to three hours. I was really, really, really tired and I knew that he could handle some crying. Wasn't gonna let him do it the way we did with Eloise though. So thankfully, we have a good friend in our home named Becca who's standing on this side of the camera. And, um, and Sean was working nights. I think I've told you that in previous videos. So Becca stepped in as an angel. And instead of me going in to nurse Wilson, she would go in. So we picked one of the night feedings. We started with the 1 a.m. one, is that right? Mm -hmm. The 1 a.m. feeding. And instead of me going in for that one, so I went in at like the 11, 11 p.m. one, and then 1 a.m. he cries for milk, and then 4 a.m. he cries for milk, right? So the one, one o'clock one, Becca went in, and she, did you do anything? He cried for he a really cried. long time, Aww. like an hour and a half. But you just stayed with him? I was in the room with him, yeah. Okay. And then kept putting like his passy in like every couple minutes. And telling him he was okay. Yeah, and I would like put my hand on his chest and tell him that he was okay and that he could sleep. Yeah, that was so nice. So we knew he wasn't alone. She did pick him up to soothe him sometimes and put him back down. It didn't make him more mad? I only picked him up once after he had been crying for a while okay. and like calmed him down. Okay. And he, like, as soon as I picked him up, he immediately, like, calmed down. And I think it was soon after that he fell asleep. Okay. With Eloise, we had to do a few different times of sleep training because we traveled and moved and, um, yeah, we were living in Spain. So we had a few nights of some version of sleep training. And if I ever picked her up and then put her back down, it made her more mad. So I didn't do that. With Wilson, though he has responded pretty well to that. If I pick him up, I can like get him to calm down and stop crying and lay him back down and he's still awake, but he's not crying anymore. So for the first night, that's what Becca did. 
then the next night he slept he i nursed him at 11 and he slept till four right Mm -hmm. Yeah, that felt amazing. So I finally got a stretch of sleep. So then the next one that we weaned him from was the four o'clock one. And we did that a couple nights later. I think it was the next night. The, the very next night. night? Yeah, because oh. I helped with that one too. Okay. And then did you do the same exact thing? Uh -huh. They all kind of yeah. blur with me. Yeah, he cried less that time. But yeah, Okay. I think it didn't totally get rid of it we just pushed it till like five or six okay because then i know i had to do one night without you it was the middle night the, so the night. other one and it was, i did it the first night and then i didn't do it with you the second night okay, and then and i did then it, with did it. The we've been kind of going back and forth and sean's taken some too but basically we just keep stretching the amount of time that he has to wait to eat and the strategy has just been we let him cry for a few minutes go and check on him put the pacifier in if it's fallen out and then we wait even longer. So it would be like, wait five minutes, wait 10 minutes, wait 15 minutes, wait 20 minutes, wait 25 minutes. Always, he's, he's okay. We're checking to make sure he's okay. Um, within a week, he was sleeping from 11 till six. That was what I wanted. I didn't want him to nurse any time between there. What he can do if we choose to is wean, be weaned from the 11 o'clock one because he really doesn't need that. Um, but I sort of like it actually. So I put him down at like 6.30 or something. So he sleeps for, from like 6 to 6 or 6.30 to 6.30. And I go in before I go to sleep. So sometimes 10.30, 10, 10.15, 10, 11, somewhere in there. And I nurse him at that point and I like it. I, I like the quality time. I like that I can chill in that moment. I maybe later I'll regret it when I have to sleep train him and he's a little older, I'm not sure. But for now, I'm okay with it. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, so in order to prepare for sleep training, we fed him more during the day. I also started with naps, letting him cry it out a little bit. So when I would put him down for a nap, I always put him down awake, um, but, but tired. And even if he would fuss, I would let him fuss. So again, I did it timed where I would really look at my clock and say like, okay, he can cry for two minutes and then I'll go in and I'll just touch him and say, it's nine night time, I love you, leave. Um, and then go to five minutes, 10 minutes. I started with naps because they were easier for me because I wasn't so tired during the day. And, um, and so I just felt more capable of like uh, enduring the sound of a crying baby because it's not an easy sound to listen to. And, uh, and once I had done that for, I would say like three days, I tried to do pretty good about nap times, having consistent schedule with naps and letting him cry a bit before nap time. He got to a point where he was falling asleep on his own for naps. And so then I felt more confident that night times would work. Um, I've heard of people going the other way where they start with nap, nighttime sleep training and that affects naps. I don't know. For me, naps seemed easier to tackle. So I'm just going to jump in and uh, give you some sleep training tips. My first one is you're going to want to ask yourself a few questions before sleep training begins. Um, one is, is your baby ready for it? Is your doctor on board? Um, if your baby's underweight, your doctor may not want you to do any sort of sleep training because your baby will require more calories at night. My doctor said that I was fine to sleep train um, at about five months. I've heard that around five months is a good time. So that's what I went with. The next question is, are you able to devote a certain amount of time, a week or two, to sleep training, to being in probably the same location? And um, some people even go so far as to say, don't leave the house for several days while you're sleep training because naps need to be consistent and nighttime sleep needs to be consistent. I did not go that route. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, but do what's comfortable for you. Also, it's gonna require help, probably. I, I know that it's possible to do by yourself. I've done it. Um, I had a couple nights where neither Sean nor Becca was available to help me, so I was the one who did it and it worked fine. But it's ideal if you can have somebody to help you. So do you have help, a family member, a friend, your partner? And yeah, like, maybe a babysitter, maybe you wanna pay someone to help you, you really can. It's not, I mean, it's not absurd. Whatever it takes for you to feel more comfortable in the process, your baby's gonna be okay. 
um, but you just might need some moral support. What type of sleep training do you want to do? Because there are uh, quite a few methods out there. You can do a bit of research. There's the kind of extreme one way of like, let your baby cry it out so much that you, you go in, you lay your baby down, you close the door, and you don't open the door again until morning. That's one theory. That's one way of doing it. There's then the other way of just like slowly, um, it's I think the no cry method where you're just like lessening and lessening the things you do to help your baby every single night until eventually the baby falls asleep on its own. Uh, I am not patient for that and I'm not uh, strong enough for a really intense one. So I found my own happy medium that worked well for me and Wilson. You're gonna want to pay attention to your baby's cues, the sleep cues that he's showing you to understand when your baby's tired. Also, so so something like that would look like puffy eyes, fussiness, yawning, along with that, how long has your baby been awake? You can look up on the internet estimated awake time for your baby's age between sleep, and it will say, um, one thing we just looked up said that a five to six month old baby should be awake for intervals of two and a half to three hours. I don't know that Wilson lasts that long generally, um, probably about two hours is what I've noticed, but maybe I should be pushing him longer, I'm not so sure. Um, don't stress yourself out about that. I would say just have something in mind so you know kind of how long to keep him up. My husband is so cute in this way. The other day the baby had been awake <laughs> for like 30 minutes and it was fussy. I think he was hungry and, um, and Sean, Sean just wrapped him up and put him in his bed and he cried really hard and Sean's like, I don't know why he's not sleeping. I was like, I think it's because he just woke up. <laughs> so you do want to have some sort of communication <laughs> in the home and just an awareness of how long your baby needs to be awake in between naps and before bed. Yeah, like a bedtime routine, a sleep indicator, something so your baby knows that it is time now to get ready to sleep. So um, for some people that could be really structured, that you walk into the room, you uh, sing a song, you close the curtains, you change the diaper, you rub them, you do, I don't know, you do whatever you do. I remember with Eloise, I'd always try and read her a book and now I don't think I've read Wilson a book yet, so I should maybe do that. Have a sleep routine that's that's helpful to you to, to calm the baby down, calm yourself down and know that it's nap time or sleep time. Um, with Wilson, what I do is I change his diaper, I put him in a sleep sack, we turn on the sound machine, we keep it really chill, we either do it in the living room, if it's quiet out here, if it's not, we do it in the bedroom. I lay him down and say, night, night, I love you, it's night, night time, and, um, and that's that. I don't nurse him right before he sleeps generally, because if you have a habit of your baby nursing or eating right before sleep, then your baby maybe associates being full with sleeping, and then if they wake up in the night and they're not full, they have a harder time falling back asleep. So the recommendation that I've followed is um, this pattern of eat, play, sleep, and then they wake up, and eat again, play and sleep. So with Wilson right now, because he's doing solids, the routine looks a bit more like he wakes up, he nurses, he maybe plays for a little bit, he eats, he maybe plays a little more, has a little water, maybe even a little bit more milk if I feel like he needs to wash it down. I call it a cup of tea. It's not like a full nursing, it's just something to like feel nice after, feel like a classy gentleman. And then play a little more, time for sleep, we do the sleep routine. I just don't nurse him right before sleep. Oh what he wears to bed is important he or she we do the zippity zip sleep sack thing it's been awesome i highly highly recommend it this is not sponsored i bought mine um actually mine was a gift from a friend but i bought the previous one that i had find find a sleep situation that works well for your baby once they get older they can't be swaddled you probably know that already oh what about in the night when your baby wakes up crying and it feels like their diapers wet um a little tricky basically the idea is that in the nighttime you don't change their diaper but with that said I have changed Wilson's diaper in the night sometimes because it's super full and it feels like he's very uncomfortable when that happens I do it like all business I don't even make eye contact with him I just put him down we change him really quick put him back in um, there have been a few tricky things where he like peed out and then peed into his jammies unfortunate changed him but again it's like dead serious quiet quick put him back in his bed he may not love it but he falls back asleep pretty soon after um it's just part of the sleep training process so as much as you can not change your baby's diaper not do a bunch in the night that's 
like ideal. Also, the final hours of the morning are are the like they're the trickiest time. Say I don't want Wilson to eat until 6 a.m. That's my my desire is that he doesn't eat until six or later. So then the hours between like three and six, if he wakes up, I really try not to do anything other than have that kid learn to fall back asleep. Um, maybe earlier if I'm like, well, maybe he's hungry, maybe he's teething, maybe he's sick, all of these questions come up in my mind, I'm more likely to feed him earlier than I am during that stretch of time because I don't want to build a bad habit where he's waking up to start his day at like four in the morning or something. Mm -hmm. That was the advice I was given from someone and I think it makes sense. It's a, it was a sleep trainer person. Here's something. During the sleep training process, Wilson would cry so hard that he would um, swallow air and sound bubbly and then he's in pain and crying. So then I would just pick him up, burp him, uh, lay him back down and then he would cry some more but at least I knew he wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't terribly dramatic but Eloise never had that experience but I could tell that Wilson needed to be burped after crying pretty hard. Um, the other thing is Wilson's voice got kind of raspy and I felt like maybe he was sick. Uh, it was kind of hard for me to know. That stuff is all so hard when you're not really sure what's going on. I did put a humidifier right next to his bed and it seemed like that helped. Also, the sleep training thing doesn't last that long. So you feel like you're preparing for night after night after night of crying. But for us, it wasn't that. I think after about three nights, uh, he slept like pretty consistently. He sometimes would wake up because he lost his passy, but we put it back in. And we're, I think, going to get a glow-in-the-dark pacifier so that he can grab it and put it back in. That's advice I got from a trusted friend today <laughs> who's also a nanny. You're really doing so good, and your baby's going to do a great job. I know that you're going to find every reason to not sleep train yet, and you're going to say, but next week we're going to do this, and then we're going to go on a trip, and then we're going to go here, and then we're going to do that. I know I did it too. Try and sleep train as soon as you can, okay? It's gonna go faster than you think. Even if you just start the process and you start weaning him from some of the night feedings, but not all of them, your baby's adaptable. He'll, they'll figure it out when you go to a new place. You'll be able to adapt to that place together and maybe do a bit of sleep training there, which I know maybe contradicts what I said about um, being in the same place for a couple weeks. Ideally, you wanna be in the same place for a few weeks. I'm just trying not to have it be where you are dead tired for the next two months because you keep putting it off. Try not to put it off, okay? That's it. Thank you so much for watching, for being a part of the channel. I love having you here. If you have tips, if you have thoughts, encouragement for other moms, leave them in the comments below. I love when you all talk to each other. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Have a great night's sleep. Hug your baby. Really good job. Okay, I'll see you on Instagram. Okay, bye.